Hello, everyone. This is Marie LaBrasse. And this is Dee Dee Gozian. And you're listening to Kaleidoscope of the Arts, coming to you from WKDW 97.5 FM, Real Community Radio, coming out of Northport, Florida. Dee Dee. Yes, ma'am. What is happening at that Northport Arts Center? Well, the first thing we'll do today is do the drawing for the dollar art raffle, and then we'll introduce the pieces for the next art raffle, which will be held actually on February 1st. So we want to uh, take it over to Karen. Well, we before, well, before we do that, let's explain to people about how do I get into this art raffle? What, what is this all about? Well, it was a, an idea that they had that different artists donated pieces of art. Most of them are smaller pieces, something that uh, you would put on the wall smaller. And um, this was a way to encourage people to come into the art center, look at the gallery shows that are hanging. And for only $1, you can put uh, your choice in. We have three pieces every month and drop your ticket into the artwork that you would like to receive. And then they do a drawing at the end of the month. And then you get a piece of artwork for only a dollar. <laughs> so for a buck, yep, you get into the dime and you get to have the opportunity to actually win a piece of art that's original. So and where do I go? Can I do it? Can I do it online yet? No, or are we gonna work on it's that? only in person. It's to encourage uh, somebody to walk through the gallery. That's why they uh, set it up. And with CDC guidelines with the mask, which Absolutely. I, I have one right here, just in case. <laughs> you, know, you know, one thing talking about the mask and that, I think people with pretty eyes and maybe, you know, you have something going on with your face, you only have to do your eye makeup. Oh, that's a good Sorry, point. <laughs> you, go out, you only have to do the makeup, you know? Look at yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and us that are like a little bit heavier, we can say it's part of the mask. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, let's go into see what's happening in your gallery and have that drying, Dee Dee. Sure. Okay, Hello. ladies, you are on. Hello, it's Karen Fresterio and Burnham again helping. They're out in the gallery now. Karen's showing one of the pieces right now that we're doing a drawing for. This piece was uh, artist Carol Stone. The name of it was The Stalking Cat. And that was introduced the last show that we had last month. Can Berna, can you draw the winner for that, please? Is she holding the phone? <laughs> no, there's two of the them. The winner is... Yeah. Okay, the winner is Phyllis Copeland. Phyllis, oh, Phyllis Copeland. Oh, All right. Copeland. She, she's with um, the um, Northport Poetry Workshop, isn't she? She's an artist. She's a gourd artist. She, yeah. uh, she's in our gift shop. Okay. I don't know if she does uh, poetry or not. Poetry. Which, somebody else. Was she at that artisan market this yes. last Saturday? Yes, she was. Okay, yes. that's why. That's why. We're thinking about her being on the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So, are we done? Do we have another piece or do they block? Here they are. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> yeah, when you're that's dealing with people yeah. that um, her iPad wasn't working correctly, so they had to go to Dee Dee's phone. And we're getting fingers. Oh, in there's it. the next one. It's oh, right. the, uh, those deer. And the it's deer. Play by Bob Miller. And I want to tell the ladies that are holding the camera, everything is mirror image. So if you want to go left, you got to go right. If you feel that you want to go that way, just let those two ladies know. Okay. Okay. Do the drawing, please, Bruno. Drum roll, please. Hey, next time I do have where I could play a Philip drum Moore. <laughs> that would be great. Philip Moore. Philip Moore. Philip Moore. Uh, the winner of the painting is Philip Moore. Got it. All right. Thank you. Next and, one. And the next piece, come on, guys, we're on radio. <laughs> next piece is a fused glass plate. It was done by uh, Pauline Stickler, our fused glass artist here at the Art Center. Oh, that's pretty. 
It is really pretty, actually. Yeah, probably better in person. And the winner, the winner is? is Cheryl Fidel. Cheryl Fidel. Okay, thank you so it much. For a dollar, I'll Cheryl tell you that. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. And we're done with that, right? Well, we just need to see the new ones for the next one. Oh, okay. Okay, okay come on, ladies. Okay, as um, they're moving and maneuvering around I'm and kind of uh, freezing them. There it is. Okay, that is by Michelle Moore. It's a. Uh, can you see it? It's a. It's a yeah. raccoon skull that's covered with uh, garfish scales. It's a. It's a sculpture. Artist Michelle Moore has done it again. This unusual creation is pure fantasy, assembled from animal bones, which happen to be the skull of a raccoon, garfish scales, and a catfish barb. This piece measures approximately five inches by four and a half inches. This sculpture could be the head of a dragon or an ankle biting creature that tenaciously stands guard to the entrance to a warlock's cave or a teenager's disheveled and odiferous bedroom. <laughs> Your imagination is the limit for the purposes of this magical sculpture. Make no bones about it. This work is unique and certainly a conversation starter. Very good. Next piece. What do we have going on? I have the ladies muted. There. Next piece, people. And Dee Dee, while well, they're going to the there next it It's candle holder with shell ter terrarium. This beachy candle in a clear glass holder complete with sand, shells, and sea glass is a welcome addition to any beach-loving home or office. The candle holder stands approximately 10 inches tall and is accented in white cording. This can easily transport the lucky winner to earlier times of strolling along the shore, beach coming for shells while feeling the sand crunch underfoot. Artist Cheryl Fidel appreciates the natural beauty of items that the sea washes upon the shore. She knows how calming it can be to stroll along and let worries wash away with the tides. Candle Holder with Shell Terrarium by Cheryl Fidel. Get it for only $1 if you stop in the Art Center between now and February 1st. And where is that Art Center, Dee Dee? It's 5950 Sam Chapo's Way, right off of Pan American Boulevard, off of 41, across the street from the skate park. Isn't it off of Northport Boulevard, not Pan American? Oh, I said that wrong because I live off Pan American. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> you can go to Dee's house. <laughs> anyway, big Christmas party going on. Hey, the last piece here. Beacon by Sharon Ng. Beacon in acrylics. This lovely acrylic painting captures the calm and peace that can fall upon you as the day comes to a close. This painting is undeniably therapeutic, is an excellent antidote to the madness of 2020. The artist, Miss Sharon Ng, created this little jewel. It measures 8 by 10 and is on gallery wrapped stretchers, meaning no frame is needed. The calm water and night sky explore the colors of blues and purples. The sky is speckled with twinkles of far distant stars. A lighthouse stands on the left shore reflecting in the water and a whitish cloud parallels the land at the horizon. This little painting exemplifies simplicity when more is said with less. We recommend gazing at this painting when pressures of the day mount. Focus on the peace, the calm, and your blood pressure will drop. Miss Ng categorizes her style as representative abstract. She represents the natural world, be it landscapes, forests, beach scenes, etc., in a variety of media. She loves to travel and returns with ideas and images to put on paper. Her work can be found at www.sharonng.artistswebsites.com and www.etsy.com shop Du Lang. She can be found on Facebook at Doodle Lang Art by Sharon Ng. Thank you. Marie, you're, you're muted. Yes, I am. There you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you talking about background, background noise. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we're done with the drawing. Um, make sure everybody signs up, goes into the Northport Art Center. I know Dee Dee lets people call her, too, if, in case you don't want to go in. Yeah, but, if you have Dee, a problem, of course. Yeah, CDC guidelines. In fact, I will bring up that information um, along the bottom here so people have a phone number to call it's 941-423-6460 dd enough with all this 
<laughs> I we we need to bring on our guests that are here for us today. And Dee Dee, partnership yeah. for the arts. I'm really pleased to have them because David, Dave Bice. I'm going to be bringing you up. He's a hard guy to nail down to come on the show. I've been trying to get Dave on since August. So wow. Finally, yeah. Well, he's a busy guy, and we'll let him come on along with his co-host, Michelle. And I'm going to have Michelle say her last name. I think it's Lucia. But, Michelle, is that how I say it? Is Lucia? Yes. Good job. <laughs> I kill everybody's names, but with a, it's kind of an Italian name, correct? It is Italian, yes. Okay, so Lucia. Lucia, Lucia, because I had Peter Lucia that lived by us, and he was an optometrist, but he was went to school with me. So Lucia, David Bice. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Hi. guys. Hi, Didi. Hi, David. Hi, Michelle. Hi, David. Thank you for coming on today. Well, because, thanks for having me. Because I'm thrilled about Partnership for the Arts and what you guys do with giving a voice to artists out there that may not have an opportunity to have one and to showcase mm -hmm. their art. And, Michelle, I see that you do a lot of things, including the website, <laughs> correct? I do. Yeah, I started with the Partnership for the Arts, redesigning their website for them. And it's actually pretty nice. And actually, while we're talking, I'll bring it up so you can reference to it so the audience can see what we're talking about and where to go. Because how do I get a hold of you guys? I go to your website, right, Dave? That's correct. Yes. Okay. So tell us, what is Partner for Ship for the Arts? And how did you come up with the idea? Well, Partnership for the Arts group. Uh, actually started back in 94 when I was living in St. Louis and I was doing the tour circuit speaking and I ran into, you know, kinship there and uh, we decided that we were going to help support the arts and in the area. So we came up with the idea of getting together and basically putting a philanthropist group together to help support the local arts, including the schools. And that's really how it kind of started. And we we filled around with the idea and worked on it some uh, for a couple of years, but it really took off in 96. And that's where we really started growing the, the partnerships where we did it with cities and schools, uh, the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Clubs, and that to help support them uh, for their art classes. Uh, I even actually taught some art classes for kids for a while. That was a lot of fun, but that's how we got together. And it's just grown from there. We have uh, quite a few people now that are in the group uh, that give on a regular basis. And then we have um, others that come in at times to, to get together to help raise money and support and give thanks to other organizations. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been very successful. We, we really enjoy that. And uh, we have people all over the States that, that are in this group. Uh, and help support. And you said 1996 you started it. 94. Well, 94, we got together. And then in 96, it really boomed. Uh, we started adding more chapters around the states. So uh, that's actually kind of a big project, Dave, to have uh, you know, on. Um, well, and that's who you are. That's what. The, in fact, before we even go there, let's talk about what you did professionally during your life? Well, professionally, I, I grew up in aviation. Um, my dad was a pilot, so I grew up in aviation. I, I actually started learning to fly a helicopter when I was 13. Uh, then went on from there and got my aircraft mechanics license, A&P license, and I did that as a living, uh, a corporate aircraft mechanic uh, in St. Louis. I did that for 15 years met my now wife, Mary, and uh, relocated to Alabama and then started up and I had many other projects, a uh, you know, remodeling company, and then I got into life safety and uh, special hazards and working with those systems. And I managed that company and then contracted for several others 
uh, worked with the large industrial power companies, manufacturers and all that for their, for their needs. Then I retired from that in the meantime of doing partnership for the arts and decided I was going to go back and get full time into the arts. And that's where it started in uh, 2011 is uh, when I went back into art and supporting and philanthropist full time. And that's where we uh, came up with the idea for bouncing around about doing a talk show. Okay, so here you are and you're in the aviation industry. You never mm -hmm. mentioned art along the way. How did art fall into here? Art started when I was young. My mom was an artist. Uh, in fact, she helped design dresses and stuff when she was very young in the 50s after World War II, after mom and dad got married. And she did that. So I have five brothers and we can all draw. We all got that from mom and mom really nurtured the art. So it was there the whole time. I, I had some wonderful art teachers in high school. They really supported uh, that and promoted that. So I, I've, I've been in an art, I've won, won awards, uh, several art shows many lifetimes ago. And, uh, uh, but I've been, I've been involved in art the whole time. Again, that's where the partnership for the arts really kind of came to fruition. So that was your passion. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's, it, because it's hard to make a living in the art industry, correct? You have to go get a real job at some point in time. <laughs> that's the whole thing. That's a, that becomes an issue no matter what part of the arts people are in, even though we use art in every day of our life, whether you're watching TV, you're writing on a paper, there's all creativity. So Michelle, you're young. You'll get over that. <laughs> you grow older. How did you, no, you said that you got involved when you were first working with their website, but you went to college locally, it looks like, in Southwest Florida, correct? Florida well, native. I grew up here. I am a Florida native, and I grew up in Punta Gorda. Um, and I've always been an artist also, mm -hmm. but I came across the same kind of problem we all do, where I needed a paying job. <laughs> <laughs> so I did go to college to become a web and graphic designer. And that was, gosh, seven or eight years ago now. So I've had um, a freelance business since then, um, designing logos and um, doing websites. And I've also been the communications manager for the Visual Arts Center since 2014, I think. Well, and so you've been with him since 2014 with Dave. I have been nope. with the Visual Arts Center since 2014, but the Partnership for the Arts, um, that's new. Dave approached me kind of over the summer to rebuild their website, and mm -hmm. um, we were working so well together, and uh, it worked out that I was able to be the co-host after that. So Right. We had an opening after the last co-host had, had, uh, had left, uh, the guest co-host their time when that series was up and uh, we were wanting to go back to a little more permanent thing for his co-host and Michelle and again we were working good together on on that and we had lunch one day and I said you know I think it would be a good idea if maybe you you looked at coming on the show and uh and let's see if you like it and we'll see how it works out and you can come on as co-host and you turn around and tell me I said, you know, I've been thinking about asking you that yeah. so <laughs> it worked out really well right right so Out of great it, minds come great things, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, collaboration. It. How often do you do your, is it a podcast, Dave? Yes, uh, it's a podcast. We uh, we we go through uh, our website, but we're on SoundCloud, Google Play. Um, yep, Apple Podcasts. I heart radio mm -hmm. podcasts, so mm -hmm. we're in a lot of different places. You can find right. our streams. Yes, and that's that's all to credit to this <laughs> wonderful young lady here that they really got us up into uh, up and going where we wanted to be. Yeah, uh, Michelle, we'll, we'll talk off air because we do want to talk to you about which site you use and all that for that for us okay. for this. Absolutely. We'd like to take our show on pod podcast too, even though we're on YouTube right now and Facebook. But 
if anybody really wants to spend the time listening to us, they'd be able to. And right. in case anybody's tuning in right now, this show won't air till Wednesday. And it'll be playing on WKDW 97.5. If you can't get us anyplace, uh, you can get us on KDWradio.com on the radio, well, on the internet. Our call letters are WKDW 97.5. We are low frequency, so we don't go real far with our range. However, if you go Alexa, play WKDW 97.5 FM. We will come on, and hopefully, I just turned it on for some of you <laughs> in the area. <laughs> so, so, getting back to you guys, no, you do you do your podcast once a week? It, it varies. Uh, we sometimes it's it we're doing them daily, catching up on the schedule. You know, CV nineteen. We had our uh, schedule set through the whole year uh, into twenty almost 2022 actually. And then of course CV19 happened. So everything came to a halt and then we had to reschedule everybody. So sometimes it's every day of the week we're, we're doing the podcast and then we're trying to scale that back to normally at least once a week, if not twice a month, but I don't think that's going to happen for a while. We're still playing catch up. You know how that is. Oh, absolutely. And truthfully doing it the way that we're doing it right now and nobody has to come to you. It keeps right. the CDC guidelines and that, because I know you have your guests in room, right? When they well, come. So we, we, do interview, we do interview people from around the world. So we, we are used to doing that as well. And we have art correspondents that report on the arts around the world. And that's all part of our show. Oh. Uh, so we, do, we do talk to people from around the world. And again, you know, we cover the arts. We also cover uh, science fiction and, uh, and that as well, and science. Uh, on the show. So we do have a broad spectrum. So we do have our correspondents again around the world that we talk to. Well, Dave, let's talk a little bit about your science. Okay. You go to all these uh, comic cons and science cons and whatever. And because of COVID, you're not, they're not having them right now, but that's, tell, that's us, correct. tell us about all the interesting people you've met and these You've delved into and had interviews with people that people would die to be having interviews with. So let's talk a little bit about that because you've been to, have you been to the one in California? In yes. LA? Okay. So, and that one's thousands and thousands and thousands of people at that one. And they have some of the highest celebrities at that mm -hmm. one out there. Who's the, who's the best interview that you've done uh the best interview that i i've done that i gotta say that i, I really enjoyed is is really a a friend of mine uh russell emmanuel he's a production uh manager for a show actually movies he, he's the uh director and producer of sci-fi shows these these are actually he actually helped build them and direct them in fact the partnership for the arts got involved in helping finance the first movie uh, that really hit that took off was called the occupants. Uh, it's shown at film festivals all over the world. And he's won probably 800 awards for the movie. Um, that's a lot of fun. That was, that was someone I had enjoyed getting to know. Uh, one that I didn't get a chance to interview. Um, and I wish I had, but we didn't have the talk show going then was I spent a lot of time with Jimmy Doohan, Scotty from the original Star Trek series. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him. And in fact, Michelle Barrett had dropped in unannounced at a convention in St. Louis. So I actually ended up having lunch and dinner with both of them uh, that night. And then, uh, then I've met several, quite a few other Star Trek actors, uh, Brent Spindler, the uh, one plays Jordy. Uh, almost had a chance to meet William Shatner, but he canceled the Tampa <laughs> Comic-Con yeah. visit. Uh, before CV-19, and we actually had him scheduled to sit down and interviewing then. So we're working on getting that back and well, set up. Well, and the Star Trek cruise, because mm -hmm. uh, I promised my husband I would take him on that, and William Shatner would have been on it this year, this last uh, year. 
Yes. And so and you're able to being press, we can wear our press badges and we can get interviews with different people like that. Mm -hmm. So talking about that, you are able to interview people from around the world. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, you're just new to the interview circuit now. So you haven't had too many people come on yet, right? Right. No, I'm actually learning quite a bit right now listening to Dave <laughs> talk about the show because I've only done about four or five um, so far. So mm -hmm. Interviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did get to interview a good artist friend of mine. That was fun. Howard Spielman. He's Howard. a local artist. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm still um, learning, you know, how, how the learning the ropes. <laughs> and, and, well, and it's a conversation, you know, yeah. you do some background research and you have the conversation with a person, but it's about the people. When you do an interview like with Dave, it's about the person, you know, they understand about the show and that, but a lot of people are interested in who the person is behind this, behind the curtain wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And that's that's really the, the point. Just just like you and Dee Dee do, you get you get the story behind the art and, and who the people are, where the real interest is. Plus the fact is like, you know, artwork, once you learn the story of a painting, it's it's a whole different world opened up to you. Right. And that's one of the, yeah, that's one of the things that we do too. We do artists that we mm -hmm. yeah, because of this venue we're able to visually see and take them right into their own space and they can show us what their artwork looks exactly. like. Yeah. And as that creativity and that opportunity hasn't been available to people before. Like it has during COVID, Dave, Michelle, Katie, we have to agree we've all had a pivot and really learn technology more than we ever had to before because we were, some of us, not Dave, but some of us were still struggling along and trying to figure it out and we were able to figure it out. So Dave, what's hmm. your biggest pivot that you've had to do through this COVID? I think the biggest pivot that, that we went through it, at least uh, concerning the talk show was actually getting set back up and rescheduling people and getting and dealing with the CV-19 and, and uh, not being able to have people come in and sit down in, across the table from you and have a cup of coffee and, and really enjoy that. Uh, we've been able to do that some, but it's been very careful screening wise and everything else. Uh, but that was the biggest point where we were used to having people coming in, sitting down from the table from you. And now we do it, i.e. much like you, uh, remotely. Remotely. So, that was the biggest part. We were set up to do that kind of anyway, uh, but we usually did around the country um, and around the world, not so much in your own hometown. So that was that was the biggest part. And one of the things that I want to give kudos to you is you were able, because you work at the Visual Arts Center, helping with some of the things that they have going on. What's your title? With the Visual Arts Center, yeah. uh, I do all kinds of stuff for them. Yeah, but, uh, trades, jack of all trades, jack of all trades, master sure. of none. What they say, <laughs> uh, but no, I do a lot of stuff with them. But but really, it's it's uh, it's a liaison with the uh, partnership for the arts group, uh, yeah. supporting the Visual Arts Center and and uh, Dee Dee up there with you. We'd, we'd certainly love to have an opportunity to talk to you about supporting you guys up there through the partnership for the arts group as well. So. You know, it's, it's welcome to you all. Yeah. So uh, that's that's kind of the liaison that, that I have with the Visual Arts Center. Yeah. And the CDC guidelines, you've helped them work through what they've had us set up there, too. I yeah, just, we had to, yeah. Because yeah. We had to run through a lot of that. Sure, of course. Yeah. And getting that set up and getting the classroom set up for that, for people coming in. And, you know, we do the temperature check and the guidelines and all that stuff when they come in the door and the, and the spacing. So, but I guess the blessing is that the Visual Arts Center is, is pretty much been able to remain open. Uh, and they are having ongoing classes now following all of the guidelines there. So that, that, that's good for them. And I just wanted to mention that because you actually do your show out of the Visual Arts Center. You're in the yeah. library there. 
Yes, we are in the library. We, we set up in the library and do our show from here. Yes, absolutely. The uh, Visual Arts Center and Janet Watermeyer, the executive director and the, and the board of the Visual Arts Center, uh, has just been wonderful to us. Uh, they invited us in the door when we approached them about the idea, and uh, it's just been a great partnership uh, working with them here in, in Punta Gorda. Absolutely, and I'm looking at the partnership of having Michelle with you now. And uh, that, she taps into the youth version because I imagine you're on TikTok and stuff like that, right, Michelle? Um, Maybe well, not. It, you know, actually, to be honest, my kids are showing me a lot about social media <laughs> too uh, because it all changes so fast. But yeah, I've definitely been able to help um, grow our Facebook presence mm -hmm. and I've gotten the partnership for the arts up on YouTube now, which is kind of a big deal for us. Um, right. So definitely it's been great to um, use my social media skills for the partnership. Yeah. And if you, she, she, she doesn't give herself enough credit. Uh, if you look at our website, if you've seen it, months ago uh, compared to what Michelle has done with it now. It's just completely a world away from where it was. And it's really it's really where we've wanted it to be for a long time. So, um, you know, we got blessed with, with, with her and several other things at the same time. <laughs> well, and I have to tell you when I went looking for it because I saw it before, when I saw it, I said, is this the same website? So I do have it on the screen for people to see it and um, I'm on the one page, but if you want, we can go over the website uh, with you. And, okay, that would be great. Uh, uh, okay. That would be and wonderful. Stream through, stream Are you, yeah, Marie, while you got that up, I just want to say you see Michelle there and then you see uh, Stephen Tacey next to him. He's, he's there, our announcer that you hear at the beginning of the show when we, when we launch each episode. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. And then you'll see uh, you'll see some of the other guest co-hosts we've had uh, on the show, uh, Catherine Lucas, and then uh, Judy, and then you've had uh, Nanette is not on there. She's actually on the art course. Not on the art there. Uh, yeah. My wife Mary and uh, Stacy for the other uh, uh, series we do is called the Taste of the Arts, where we interview chefs and everything else for uh, for that interview and recipes and all that. So it's oh, just, wow. yeah. Do you ever do cooking? Yeah. Well, we just started putting uh, some recipes on the website and mm -hmm. a taste of the arts has its own page now because right. we definitely want to expand what we do um, and talk to more chefs and put up some of Dave and Mary's and favorite recipes. So we'll definitely be doing more with cooking and recipes. Right, and interviews with chefs uh, yep. and, and that kind of thing. So that was the whole part of that is we just got that finally launched again. Big kudos to Michelle for getting that up and going. Yep, yeah. so if you're interested in, you know, the good eats, that page is going to be where you want to go and see all the episodes just about food. Yeah, and, <laughs> and food as well. We, we also throw in there, we, we, we talk with uh, winemakers and uh, uh, chocolate and uh, my, one of my favorites, of course, is, is pairing the, the wine and the chocolate and a, a cigar together. So, <laughs> uh, okay, all right. And so we yeah. don't get you for a gift. I'm gonna um, play just a little clip from your show here, just so the audience can okay, see. So no, that's actually one of our um, events that we had. Yeah, that's uh, that's from one of the events we held. Wow, where was that at? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> where was that at? That was at FM Don's here in Punta Gorda. Uh, we had a private uh, dinner uh, for the people that support the arts and, uh, and the PFTA group. We actually had three musicians come in. Um, Isaac Mingus is the double bassist for the Charlotte or the Punta Gorda Symphony. Uh, and then the uh, sax player was uh, with the, used to be with the Miami Symphony. And then the keyboard or pianist, he was with the Venice Symphony. Uh, 
so we had them come in and play, and then we had uh, Laura. Yep, that was Laura Pommier doing the painting live that we all got to watch. Right, she did a live painting there at the at the dinner event. So that's the kind of other things we do to help support the arts and, and the partners and all that. Well, isn't that fun, Dee Dee? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And I recognized Laura and talk right away. <laughs> there you, of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> hey, there. that was awesome. I bet you a lot of people go on now. I've noticed myself that with the pandemic, people are cooking at home more and, and mm -hmm. how much more uh, content that that you have about that probably people interacting a lot more because i'll tell you what i i myself have found myself cooking a lot more and doing things so i would enjoy i would enjoy watching that i didn't i wasn't aware so i'm glad, so glad to have you on the show and let me see that because that looked like a really fun time and i loved all the the recipes and things you had that was great yeah and uh excuse me mary and i both um we love to cook uh, in fact, that's how we spend any free time that we have uh, together. We always end up cooking some way as well. So it's either grilling or cooking in the kitchen. So that's how we spend our time. Mary is a, a wonderful chef. Uh, she really likes to expand on that. And I've always loved to cook myself. So we, we have a lot of fun doing that. No, that was used for a fundraiser, correct? For a partnership for the arts? Actually, it was uh, not not so much a fundraiser. It was actually to help support one of the local restaurants and the businesses. With Keith? With, uh, yes, Chef, Chef Keith. Mm -hmm. and in fact, uh, Mary and Stacy had interviewed Chef Keith uh, for the first episode of Taste of the Arts. And, you know, with CB19 came along and everything shut down for such a long time. And, and, and fortunately, they've been able to open back up um, restricted wise to the public. And that was kind of an event we all put together to help support them, the local business. Nice. Yeah, yeah because the arts in the meantime with Laura and the musicians, uh, because they, they did all get compensated for that night as well to be there. Okay. And FM Don's has always been supportive of the community. So yes. any of the restaurants out there that they're hurting and that if you can do anything to help them right now, it's been a hard, hard year and so many people are still out of work. Yes. Yes. And, and Marie, while we're on that subject, if you don't mind, I, I want to give a, a, a shout out to some of our other partners in the area. Um, the Wyvern Hotel, uh, they support the arts in a big way. They've been supporting the VAC for a long time with their every six months. They change out all the artwork in the hotel, uh, the restaurants. Uh, Keaton and, and Frank over there are just fabulous. Uh, then uh, River City Grill as well, the Blue Turtle. Um, and then, uh, of course, some of the restaurants over at Fisherman's Village, uh, the Philly, the village fish market, yeah, uh, the, yeah. Night, and uh, Captain's yeah. Table as well. Uh, they've all been just wonderful in helping support the arts. And that's one thing that the arts, those restaurants help support the arts, but the arts have supported the restaurants too. And that's what it's all about is collaboration. And exactly. to be able to, uh, one thing that I've learned through this pandemic, and you guys can speak about this too, is, um, is, that, one of your is that one of your calls? Oh, you know what? Somebody, I'm on, somebody's trying to get a hold of me and they're using Facebook to call me. <laughs> and and, and they're, I turned off my phone, but it's coming through the, through the internet. Uh, anyhow, I have found and I've slowed down and I've pivoted and I've re-evaluated what I've been doing in life and mm -hmm. what's important and who's the important things and not to try to spread myself so thin. I could go with thinness, but, you know, with, with my time thin. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I have found is I refound my family, you know, oh. because I was spending too much time probably out in the community instead of focusing sometimes within the family. And my husband says, Boy, you're really busy. I said, I was just doing this outside of the house. Now I'm doing it inside of the house so he really sees what I do do it do do out in the community. <laughs> But one thing I did find is 
some of the stuff we don't need. You know, a lot of us have too much stuff. And it's mm -hmm. more about the experiences or more about people. You know, it's about people. It's not about things per se. It's about keeping people mentally healthy. And I found myself, and I'm going to admit it right here, I didn't think I was depressed, but I was trying to get through Giving Tuesday because I was cheering it. And I became, I finally faced it. And I said, you're, de you're depressed because you can't do these things in person. I felt I was failing at some of the things that I normally do. Enough about me and my therapy. So what about you guys? Well, I, I, I think, Marie, everyone has, has felt the effects of CV-19 personally, professionally, and everything else. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, again, we're used to having people in here at the end of the table, across the table talking, and you're not able to do that anymore. And you had to, as you very well said, learn to, to deal with that in technology and, and do a different format. So I think everyone has felt that, if not just financially, definitely emotionally. It, it's a tough thing to deal with. And really, we don't know how much longer this is going to go on. Uh, and how long we'll be dealing with this kind of thing. Uh, so I, I think we're there with you. I think everybody completely understands what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. True. And how about you, Michelle? I agree. I mean, I think we all probably don't even realize that we're going around with this extra layer of stress, you know, that's taxing us a bit. And since every day is touch and go. Yeah. And, you know, you don't know what might happen the next day. Um, but I think one thing that I've learned is to embrace the change. Um, because usually uh, the change will take you in a better direction eventually. And a lot of good has come out. Um, a lot of creative, new creative ideas, I should say. <laughs> a lot of new creative ideas and solutions have come out of this situation. Yeah. So at least there's a silver lining. <laughs> Absolutely, you're right about that. And finally, Cena is for having a therapy session. <laughs> How about you? Okay. I tend to be the, uh, the I tend to be the, the optimist in about every situation anyway. So you know, I just. You gotta, you gotta keep living. You gotta make the best of every situation you can, even though it, it is extremely difficult at times. But uh, you know, you just gotta hope for the best and keep moving on. It's true. It's now, true. for me to actually see what your schedule is coming up, do you have that on the website? Do you throw it up there? Do you? How do you let people know that you have an episode coming up? Uh, well, the way we do it, no, we don't have the uh, we don't have the list up because, especially right now, it is still we're we're reworking. It's it's part of those touch and go things, yes, you know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, because we're reworking basically two years and rescheduling shows, and with everything going on, and then what I mean is our schedule was based for two years out, and now we're revamping that entirely. So we would have to change it daily because it does change daily as far as interviews and 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 who we're having, when and where. But if someone uh, was interested, you can follow us along uh, on the, you can join. Yeah, we, um, you should follow us on Facebook if you want to know who's coming up because usually we'll post a little sneak peek, a photo of our last interview and say um, that that person is coming up next. So the best way to find out what we've got going on is through our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, where we talk art. Yeah, that's the yep. partnership for the arts group page. Um, we have another one there, Marie, yep. which is the uh, where we talk art. Yep, that's where you can find us. I believe it's where we talk art. Yeah. Oh, is that uh, uh, open to the public? This one's private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Let me see if I can find it. Go. Go ahead and keep on talking. Where we find art, huh? Okay. Yeah. Where we talk about that page. Yeah. And like I said, we are on YouTube now. So if anybody likes to listen on YouTube, I know there's a few out there. Um, okay, I'm I not finding it. Where we find it is, uh, am I putting that in there? Correct. Okay, I have your partnership. Okay. It should be uh, where we talk art. Oh, where we talk art. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the name okay. of the show. Mm -hmm. Okay, where we talk art. Uh, 
Okay, and uh, keep on talking, Dee Dee. Ask them okay. some more questions. So, uh, David, you said that you're on the YouTube also. Mm -hmm. Would I find that under where we talk art? If I'm going to go search it. Yep, I believe you can find it where we talk art podcast. Okay, because yep. I would like to. I would like to watch some of them. Yeah, I'm not finding it right now. And our show is going to be ending. Can you believe it's already been like 45 minutes? And the reason why our show actually is 53, but we do an intro and an exit. Exactly. Exactly. No, we understand. And uh, uh, Marie, Didi, uh, thanks for having us on the show. We appreciate it. Yeah. It was and, great to see you guys again. Yeah, and we want to have you back on again. We want to actually schedule you for next year because I know that is a issue with you to get you scheduled because you are a busy guy. You have your own show and we want to make sure that you keep our audience informed, you know, about what's happening out there. And Dave, you have different guests than we have. So if we can be a collaborative thing and you just you know, let us know if you have anything interesting coming on. We can bring you on and we can bring them on and we can have you even co-host with us the show. Well, that would that would be wonderful, Marie, Didi. I appreciate that. And yes, again, you know, it's it's called Partnership for the Arts Group for a reason. <laughs> yeah. so anything we can do to collaborate and help support you guys as well, that's why we're here. Well, well, that. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to the audience today for listening in. This is Marie Labras. And Dee Dee Gozian. And Dave Weiss. And Michelle Lucia on Kaleidoscope of the Arts coming to you from WKDW 97.5 FM Rural Community Radio from the Bishop West Real Estate Mobile Tower. Thank you everybody. Have a great day. And remember you have choices in life and choices of being kind or not to be kind. What should we choose, Dee Dee? We always choose kindness, Marie. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.